Hello and welcome to episode 36 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are excited to have as our special guest, Amit Zavery. Amit is the Executive Vice President of Product Development, Oracle Cloud Platform, Middleware and Java, and a member of Oracle's executive team. He was instrumental in building Oracle's Fusion Middleware product portfolio that scaled from zero to five billion US dollars in annual revenue in less than 10 years, and is now leading Oracle's transformation into a cloud platform provider by starting and building Oracle's public cloud. Hi, Amit, a warm welcome to you. It's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Oh, thanks for having me. Excellent. And hi, Dave, great to have you back on the show. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's a great topic. Great to have Amit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A warm welcome to you both. It's great. And look, in this week's show, we're talking about Cloud Auto ML, which promises to bring custom DL model building capabilities to organizations, even if they don't have data scientists on staff. It's a self-service democratized option that builds on Google Cloud ML Engine. So, I mean, we've got a great opening question for you guys, and I think we'll go straight to you first, Dave, then lead on to Amit. How should CIOs, CTOs, and COOs be dealing with the massive amount of new and improved ML products that are flooding into the marketplace. Yeah, well, this is a this is a good way to deal with it. I think the ability to kind of uh, abstract ourselves away from the complexity of the underlying, you know, data science stuff that's going on out there. Um, you know, as as I was, uh, you know, teaching some data science classes and doing some workshops with clients and things like that, I came quickly to realize that it's not easy. For people to understand this stuff and put together kind of the understanding of the of the metadata and how to assemble things together and how to you know make the right decisions and therefore people end up making huge mistakes where they get the wrong information uh, out of the information that they have in these big data systems and uh, the reality is, is data science is very complicated so what we're doing now and certainly this is an instance of a product there's other products out there on the market um, that will allow us to in essence ask questions uh, to these systems versus trying to figure out how to assemble a query and how to you know assemble a metadata model, how to assemble data abstraction and how to bind a ML system onto a uh, onto a big data system. So the reality is in order to make data uh, big data systems usable, certainly by the executives and the people in the organization, we can't hire oceans of data scientists to go off and make these decisions. We need to figure out technologies that are going to abstract us away from it. So, you know, getting back to the sea level aspect of the show, they should really start depending on looking at these technologies as kind of a key enabler to make use of information that they typically couldn't get used for. But by the way, make it enable, allow it to be enabled without having to go off and uh, in essence have a huge staff of data scientists. It was almost an impossible and hugely expensive and you know hugely complex. So man, I'd love to get your uh, perspective on this. No, I think this is a good insight. You, uh, what you mentioned makes perfect sense. Uh, in general, I think the data science is becoming a very critical function and capability required by every business now, right? And how do you make it easier for, for companies to not make this a very complicated and a very uh, I would say difficult to be able to use it. So having it, having simple, easy to use tools around it, having ability to kind of use a lot of data you collect as an enterprise and make some sense out of it and uh, and make better business out of it is very, very critical. Uh, so the data science where you don't, uh, to be able to do functions like data science without a lot of data scientists is, uh, is the right way forward. Uh, for example, uh, Oracle, we bought this company called datascience.com which basically provides almost like a whole lifecycle management for all the data you collect and for any developer to be able to build an application using the data you have and do data science kind of work. So you can use frameworks from anybody out there, be it a framework for a TensorFlow or you can use a framework like AutoML or other, other things out there. And you don't have to, as a user, learn about all the nitty gritty about it. And uh, it's an important factor when you are trying to build and, and deliver applications. So sim making it simple, easy to consume, and be, be, be able to deliver those things fast. So where do you think the, the larger growth in this tech? This is kind of new, uh, new, newish into the market. I wouldn't say it's completely. You know, I've seen things like this before in the past, uh, but not necessarily machine learning based. So you know, say you know, two years, three years, five years time, 
what kind of capabilities are we going to be looking at? And by the way, is this going to eliminate the data scientists from the uh, from the organization? Yeah, I don't think the data scientist function, function goes away from organizations. You still need experts inside every company who can now see whether the models are working, whether you're getting value or things out of it, which is very hard for everybody inside an organization to really do things with. So uh, systems you built should be able to do a lot of things in easy fashion. fashion. So you might not need a lot more data scientists to manage all the volume of information you're getting, but you do still need data scientists to help you evaluate between different capabilities out there and be able to figure out what to use and how to use it. But it needs to become a very more integrated fashion, integrated flow into your applications versus something on the side. What today is, if you look at most of the enterprise, data scientists kind of live in their own world on the side doing the work and then provides information back to the, the, the developers who then go and land up doing things. This needs to become much more integrated than it is today. And everybody, every developer, every user becomes kind of a data scientist in a way without having to learn, like go to school and do like 10 years of data science work before they can do that work. So that I think is the difference as we move forward. So do you think we're going to end up with less mistakes? I mean, one of the things when I'm uh, looking at big data systems as people are doing uh, data analytics is that they end up uh, asking the wrong questions or assembling assembling the uh, technical question incorrectly and therefore get back erroneous information that they view as credible. And uh, that's obviously going to be a disaster if they start adjusting their business based on these metrics that are coming back. So are well, we going to extract are we going to abstract ourselves from uh, making mistakes? No, I, I think again the part which data science or things like this, this technologies are not going to take away everything out of that, right? There is a huge amount of human element. There's also somebody who has to understand the domain and the expert understanding of the business. So you just don't take anything a computer gives you and said believe everything until you understand what the business implications are. So you do need people who understands the domain, understands details, understands the business with, before they make decisions. So it's garbage in, garbage out, right? So if your data is useless, if you're not getting the right information, it's not complete, you're not going to get a lot of value out of having data scientists or even using tools uh, out there to make business decisions. I think this is just one more making it simpler and easier for business to kind of get information. And then the decisions still need to be at the C-level to uh, somebody who understands the business implications, understands those uh, outcomes, and then may be able to make some final uh, judgment calls on things. I wouldn't let my business to be run by uh, a tool or a data scientist uh, algorithms and then kind of making decisions based on completely on that. But you have to have a lot of lot of uh, history, like understanding of a lot of things before you make decisions anyway. Yeah, speaking of that, I mean, operationalizing these these queries, basically these data, um, these uh, large data queries bound to machine learning and, and not and the ability to kind of bring them back into the process. So instead of having to go through a human being that's making a decision, we're, we're in asking the question to the database, the database is responding, and we're making an instant decision based on it being bound within the process. Um, I don't see a lot of this going on today, but I think we should see a lot of this going on today. Kind of remove the humans from, number one, making a mistake, and number two, in essence, remove the emotion out of out of doing this and in, in essence kind of making it automating everything within the organization this goes to digital enablement all those sorts of things but not practice as much as i think it would you think it's going to increase yeah i think that the, the good thing which will happen i think is the, the speed of being able to get to a point where you have everything you need to make a decision today i think there's so many elements of information not available to a c-level executive to be able to get and really get and hone down to things you really uh, can use to make a decision. There's a lot of missing information, there's a lot of missing parts, and that if it can improve and the speed of getting that to the person which matters, I think that part will be really the powerful piece of it. After that, it comes down to humans who are running the businesses to now say, you know, I have everything I need. Let me make the right call for my business at that particular moment uh, based on the things I've seen, what I have, uh, I have, what I have understanding of, and what I have experience with. Today, I think the big problem always has been for a lot of the executives the missing information. And it's not fast enough and it's not uh, complete, uh, completely brought together in one place. So final question, do you guys, do you see or continued centralization of information, uh, whether existing cloud or on-premise, but we're getting to the point where we're trying to consolidate all of the different silos out there. Uh, are we going into one single platform, or are we going to leverage them where they lie and, in essence, use them kind of a network database system or, or kind of a mixture of both? 
Yeah, I don't think so. My at least uh, what we're seeing today is I don't think so there will be one central systems. Right? I think you will need to be able to leverage every information which is out there in multiple formats and multiple places. And the systems you need to build and what I think what we're doing at Oracle is to really make sure that they can all be integrated. So you're still not doing the decision making in a silo, but you don't have to go through the extra effort of bringing everything together in one place before you can make the decision. So you should be able to tap into the sources irrespective of where they are. And it could be multi-cloud, it could be multiple application, it could be on-prem, it could be in the cloud uh, applications and from third party vendors. And how do you now see that with a veneer on top of that with the analytics tools built in, bringing that information together for you? So as a user, you shouldn't even care where all these things are or how they operate and what versions of things are running, but you do want to be able to now use that information to really make business. That's really our goal here. And uh, what we're trying to do is make sure that both things are all integrated. Sure things make, sure things, uh, sure makes things more simple and less expensive. Uh, back to you, Brad. Thanks, Dave, and thanks, Amit. I think we covered some great ground there, and uh, yeah, very insightful, very insightful. Thanks for those questions, Dave. Really appreciate that. Um, look, I've got a, a thing to ask you, actually, Amit, is that you know the the whole market share of you know artificial intelligence and machine learning, you know, has become you know from I think 2017 the figures came in from Deloitte that it was worth about 12 billion, uh, and now it's looking and it's expected to uh, reach at least by 2021 uh, 57.6 billion in, as regards to spending on artificial intelligence and machine learning. In that sort of marketplace, where do you position Oracle uh, in in that and, and remaining competitive? Yeah, no, I think as uh, I was saying earlier, I think the AI for us is a pervasive technology which will be used across multiple applications. Uh, it's going to be used in our Oracle application. It's going to be a tooling which is available for customers to use for themselves and making it simpler without, without having all the data scientists required to operate all this stuff. So we see ourselves as a kind of the key provider. If you look at the data today, the bigger the information which is important to AI is all been stored in systems which Oracle builds in many cases. All right, so we've been one of the key providers of uh, data management uh, technologies and big data kind of uh, offerings. And AI is completely dependent on data. So if you want to make successful and make, make a successful AI application been built, you need to have a technology set which can scale, interoperate, and integrate all this information together. And this is where Oracle strengths lie, and that's really where our uh, business has been for many, many years. So we feel very uh, excited about the opportunity we have with AI. Uh, our, our historical background and the IP we built for many, many years really plays very well in this space. So uh, whatever the number of, in terms of revenue and opportunity out there in the market for AI, uh, you can definitely guarantee to see that Oracle will be the, one of the key providers and players in that space. Yeah, great. As you say, your your core is the the database. So, I mean, you know, everything's led from that basically. So I think you you've got your you've got a firm set of cards in one's hand, as they would say. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, Amit, thanks for being part of the C Suite show this week. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank, thanks for having me. And thank you, Dave. Thanks for being part of the C Suite show again. Always a pleasure. It's always great to be here. It's great having Amit. You did a great job. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Here, here. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C Suite show. Um, Dave, Amit, and myself are all on Twitter and various other social media platforms, and I'll put the links in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment on the channel, and uh, you know, share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. And look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks very much.